welcome to the Cryptonomatron. Today I'm doing a review on Grain ICO. Grain is an infrastructure project that allows companies to process work agreements on the blockchain and they've got their own payment solution as well. Sounds interesting, but if this is your first time here and you want to learn about ICOs, blockchain, Bitcoin and other related stuff, then click on that subscribe button, click on that bell notification icon and you'll get notified as soon as I upload new content and as soon as I go live. Okay guys, let's get on with the Grain ICO review. So Grain uh, doesn't really have any competition. It, it's um, a bit of a uh, odd one to, to place really in, in terms of, um, where it's, of what its competitors are. Um, the reason I'm saying this is that you know, you've got these uh, centralized solutions for freelancers to get in touch with and potential employers like Upwork and Freelancer.io um, where you can go on and find freelancers to do any sort of job. But Grain it isn't a marketplace for freelancers or employees to sell their services. Now I've watched a couple of uh, video reviews on Grain before I did my own review and there was people saying that that's uh, basically the service that Grain offers. It isn't. What Grain is is a back-end solution for companies to process labor contracts and with an attached payment service as well so it's all automated so companies basically use grain behind the scenes to process all their uh, their labor contracts to uh, pay their workers that's what grain is grain isn't a marketplace for services and i have to stress that so you know it was hard to find really any direct competitors and uh, the only one that's you know maybe even close is Kanya coin now Kanya launched the ICO fairly recently I did a review of it the review is up there and um, it, it but again it's more of a marketplace for services rather than um, what green offer which is the the back-end solution for companies <laughs> So there are three problems or three main problems that Grain is looking to solve and these apply to all businesses. So they are not uh, pigeonholing themselves into one industry or one sector. Uh, this is pretty much a universal problem for um, the vast majority of companies operating today. So uh, that increases the scope for the, the use case for, for grain as well. Um, the first one is the inflation of work. And basically what that means is just the constant increasing costs of maintaining traditional employee relationships. Uh, but by moving onto the blockchain, using smart contracts, then you're making instant payment mechanisms um, that add value and take away um, uh, unnecessary middlemen as well, like payroll, accountants, and um, that type of thing. So that's the the real pain point it's going to solve. Now, if you're a small business and uh, you know you're um, uh, hiring an accountant, that can cost a lot of money. With Grain, eventually you won't have to have that accountant on board. You won't have to pay him, as everything will be automated and everything will be done on smart contracts. And again, another advantage of using Grain is it's uh, location agnostic. It doesn't matter which country you're operating in. It will be able to, um, uh, you know, satisfy whatever criteria that country requires, including taxation social um, insurance contributions, pension contributions like superannuation in Australia, for example, that's mandatory for employers to, to pay. And uh, this will save companies, especially small businesses, billions of dollars annually, because it cuts all the red tape out and uh, introduces what they're calling a dynamic workforce. So yeah, that I mean that in itself, uh, having run a small business myself before, I can definitely see uh, where this would, um, would be an advantage for small businesses. So the second problem they want to solve is expensive cross-currency payments. Now, I'm very familiar with this problem as well. Um, again, I've ran my own small businesses, so I definitely understand what the issue is with um, cross-currency um, payments. It's expensive, um, and it doesn't really return the company or the employee much value at all. You're losing a lot of money by um, sending money through banks, and uh, therefore, you know, uh, currency exchanges take money, the exchange rate's not as good as it should be, and it's just a real hassle uh, to, to do. And from an employee perspective, I also understand because I've worked around the world, I've worked in South America, um, Africa, um, Asia, extensively around the world, so I understand as well uh, how 
difficult it is for companies to pay uh, people that are basically location agnostic and move around and you know dynamic in a sense so um, it's definitely a, a, an issue but by um, utilizing grain what grain essentially are going to do is use their tokenized ecosystem on the blockchain uh, to uh, manifest payments and then um, you will get paid out in fiat wherever you are so it, it negates the need to use banking services and uh, cross-currency payments become a lot easier to facilitate uh, by using a, a tokenized system so the third and final pain point they want to solve is the late payment for flexible workers now as you can imagine um, cash flow is required for businesses to continue to do business and also for employees to survive so getting paid on time is really really important now <clears throat> according to the Zurich SME risk index um, it showed that more than half of Britain's small and medium sized enterprises or businesses are owed an estimated uh, 44.6 billion pounds in late payments and that's quite significant that's incredible so um, it's a real real problem because if you don't if you're a small business owner and you don't get paid you can't really function you can't continue to uh, um, pay yourself you can't hire new employees you can't invest in anything you can't market it really puts you in a difficult situation I've been in that situation myself so I understand it um, totally so uh, what you really need is you really need to get paid on time and grain will facilitate that because grain has automated payments and it's done through smart contracts well, there'll be no more waiting around to get paid for three months six months or possibly never from companies that you've done work for so that is a definite pain point uh, that's going to be solved by the grain uh, infrastructure <laughs>
it might be a little, a little bit deceiving for this project because a lot of companies might try to implement um, smart contracts on their own, especially uh, you know the larger companies because they might think that having their own system will be better than using a third party system such as Grain. So you've got to take that into account and uh, that might negatively affect Grain in a way. But um, if you look at where their target market is, you're looking at staffing agencies, uh, payroll, uh, human resource system developers, accounting software, and many others. And as it says here in the white paper, it allows organizations to util utilize objectively measurable and transparent labor contracts while substantially lowering overhead costs of work agreements. So um, this is definitely going to be more applicable, I feel, to small and medium-sized enterprises that don't want to um, have the hassle of um, implementing their own smart contracts or their own blockchain. This is going to be um, ideal for those types of companies. They can bring in this efficient and money-saving system um, without any hassle really and then they can implement it employees will get paid automatically it automates everything and that really is um, a big big market uh, you know as we discussed in the, the problems chapter you know there's uh, uh, over 50 uh, percent of uh, uk businesses small medium uh, enterprises in the uk uh, suffer from late payments and you know uh, that's a market that's ripe for disruption <laughs> So blockchain now, and they are building on the Ethereum blockchain, I believe. But the question that I get asked quite a lot is, does this project really need a blockchain technology? Well, in this case, I think this is an ideal use case for blockchain. I think this is one of the areas where blockchain can really disrupt and make a difference and can demonstrate how useful it really is. Now, the reason I say this, um, and I'll refer to the white paper here uh, uh, while doing so, is because it's flexible enough to allow for different types of agreements to be implemented. It is transparent. Everybody that's involved in the smart contract knows their obligations and knows what they've agreed to as well. Um, it also allows for cheap remittance of worker compensation. Employers can pay employees very easily uh, with low cost and payments can be made instantly across currencies without high transaction fees as well. So it can facilitate cross-border uh, cross payments, cross-currency payments. Um, you know, it really does solve the pain points that we discussed earlier. But as for the grain ecosystem in itself, it consists of five elements. I'll briefly go through them. The first one is obviously the labor contract. It's a smart contract, um, and it's the essential element here. Um, we need to know when, where, and how the work is going to be performed, and you know both parties have to agree on that, the employer and the employee as well. It also facilitates a payment mechanism, which uh, will be the transfer of, of uh, funds to the employee after they've completed the task. And then there's uh, liquidity insurance as well. Now, this is important because this protects participants from typical fluctuations in the value of cryptocurrencies. And um, there's also the harvest, which allows uh, workers to benefit from the success of the grain ecosystem. But essentially what the harvest is, is, is a um, profit distribution uh, to participants in the ecosystem. So it's in, in, in essence, it's an incentivization to use the ecosystem. Then the final uh, element of the ecosystem is governance as well. And this makes sure grain can answer all the regulatory and compliance requirements that are asked of it, depending where it's operating. <laughs> So in the tech section, I'm going to break down the five different elements of the ecosystem. But first of all, I have to state that they do have a private beta available. Demos on YouTube, the link I will leave above there. Um, so you can click on it and go and have a watch of that. But uh, they are a bit coy with the, uh, the code. There's no GitHub. So uh, that's a bit of a, a disappointment. However, let's move on and look at element number one, the smart contracts or the labor contracts as they refer to here. And we can see the uh, details that will be registered in the contract is who is responsible for delivering the work, when the work will be completed, the compensation for the work also in fiat and grain, uh, the payment conditions and when consensus for the work performed is reached. Now consensus is automatic on closing of the contract. As you can see here from this table, uh, it actually outlines how 
the consensus is going to be achieved and of course we have to find consensus here so you know we know whether the employee can actually get paid the different agreements that are possible through a smart contract system like this are numerous and um, again they don't just apply to a employer employee relationship they can be used for many many different types of uh, relationships between a number of different parties as well so fully flexible so element number two of the ecosystem is payment and once consensus has been reached then the worker needs obviously to be compensated for what he's done now grain tokens are used so an amount of grain tokens is transferred to the worker's wallet and any um, requirements or contributions like for example superannuation in Australia are deducted off that amount and then the uh, remainder is transferred to the worker's wallet the funds are instantly available at the disposal of the worker and um, also the uh, employer has to pay an additional small percentage of the transaction it's default at one percent but can be adjusted by whoever's using the, um, the in infrastructure whichever company that is they call them integration partners um, or employers and uh, that goes into the workers personal harvest fund uh, we'll talk about harvest fund a bit later on and that can be used immediately or saved up and uh, utilized later on then the transaction fee for this service is 0.25 of, of a percent and that goes to grain and to the transaction partner as well i believe it's split 50 50 between grain and uh, the company that's utilizing the ecosystem so getting paid in fiat currency is obviously going to be a big concern for an employee and the grain ecosystem will give them the option the default option will be to be paid in fiat but you can also uh, request to be paid in grain as well and hold the cryptocurrency if you think it's going to increase in value then you can uh, you can hold it accordingly and then um, perhaps benefit from that now the way they're going to facilitate the fiat payments is they're going to partner with several major exchanges and then that will facilitate exchange of the grain token for fiat currency and uh, payment to the workers in their uh, in country's uh, in national currency so you know it's uh, it's that's a necessary part of the system because at the moment as i explained you can't really spend cryptocurrency that easily especially not erc20 tokens nobody's going to take them and the hassle of having to go to an exchange and uh, change them for ethereum or bitcoin and then cash out using um, exchanges like coinbase is quite frustrating so this is a very important a part of the ecosystem that they have to implement and um, it, again that is going to be key to whether this will succeed or not I believe so there are three options for payments escrow is uh, the first one and the employer will then pay for the work upfront by putting the required amount of grain uh, according to the smart contract into escrow as soon as the contract is initiated and once consensus is reached all parties can retrieve their respective part of the escrow funds as specified in the contract if uh, whatever for whatever reason the consensus has not been reached at the expiration date funds are released and parties must establish a new contract there's also what's called a currency option and this means that the employer uh, pays for the work after it has been delivered but it requires a currency option that locks in the exchange rate of grain to fiat at the moment of entering the contract that means when the work has been completed the uh, employer uh, or the company has the option to buy the required amount of grain at the original exchange rate uh, to fiat. There's the final option which is just in time payment and that means the employer receives a payment obligation once the work is completed and with this option it's not necessary to pay for the work up front. So element number three on the ecosystem is the liquidity insurance. Now this is essential due to the volatility of cryptocurrency and when a cryptocurrency is young like grain will be when it goes on exchanges it's likely to be quite volatile and uh, we're likely to see quite um a large fluctuations up or down in the grain token at different periods of time and depending on market sentiment and some other factors so there needs to be a system to um, ensure that when you're exchanging the grain for fiat to give the workers their payout that you know any issue with volatility is uh, mitigated and this is what we're talking about when we when we mention liquidity insurance now um, there will be an insurance wallet which is the main reserve fund of grain they will hold i think 25 percent or 30 percent of the total amount of grain tokens in this insurance wallet for the purpose of liquidity insurance this is very important to make sure that this ecosystem actually functions as 
intended. Now, to guarantee payment to the employee, uh, the wallet will reserve 150% of the token value of every contract in escrow until the contract is completed and liquidated. And uh, that's basically uh, how it works. There's a um, equation there to calculate the amount of grain required, but essentially they're just going to have this uh, reserve fund on standby in case there's uh, any volatile movements of the currency and so that the employee can get paid what the smart contract demands. So element number four is the grain harvest. Now, basically, this is going to reward participants using the ecosystem and allowing them to share in the success of grain. Uh, there are two ways these rewards are going to be created. One is going to be a profit sharing of the escrow insurance. Second is the direct individual compensation for workers. Now, payouts will be in the grain token. They'll go straight into the ERC20 wallet for the worker and can be spent immediately or saved up, uh, depending on what you want to do with them. Now. Uh, proceeds from the escrow, uh, as grain increases over time, as the value of it increases over time, the insurance wallet that's um, the reserve fund will collect more than it's actually spending. So the profit of that will be returned directly into the ecosystem and divided amongst the participants, both employers and workers as well. So that's the incentivization for both parties to utilize this system. Every year, they're gonna publish a formal calculation for the distribution of these profits, and uh, that'll give you some incentive to actually want to use this, uh, this ecosystem. Now, direct compensation for workers, um, the default, again, I discussed it before, the default is 1% from the company to the employee. But again, the employee can actually change that depending on what's required. And, uh, you know, for example, in Australia, I think superannuation, the minimum something like 11%, 12%. The company can then adjust that percentage up to 12% and then um, contribute to the uh, pension plan or the superannuation through this direct compensation scheme. Last but not least, element number five on the ecosystem, governance and compliance. Now, this is related to regulations and compliance issues throughout different countries. And this is going to solve that problem. Um, they are going to be achieved by adding code or clauses to each different smart contract uh, and implementing measures on the transaction partner site. So obviously, if you're an employer, there's certain requirements you need to meet, certain laws you need to comply with, and uh, this is essentially how it's going to how it's going to be achieved. So. Different examples of this would be auditing options for external regulatory organizations, proof of experience or certification for different uh, workers being hired, mechanisms for paying taxes and auditing fees, identity checks of green participants, you know, are they who they say they are? And that can be done through a identity service like um, a Civic, which is also in the blockchain, and then some other possible measures as well. <laughs> So let's discuss the grain token use now. And the first one is 25% of the total amount of grain tokens will be held in reserve for the liquidity insurance. Now this um, liquidity insurance is necessary, as I already uh, pointed out, to ensure the volatility of the grain token does not negatively or adversely affect the use of the ecosystem. Number two, the excess reserve proceeds from escrow will be distributed back to the employers and employees. So over time, as the value of uh, the grain token increases, the reserve will uh, go over 25% and anything over that 25% held in reserve will be given back to the employers and employees as a reward. And it's also going to incentivize people to use the system as well. Number three, it's going to be used for payments on the ecosystem. Now, uh, the default uh, payout for employees is going to be fiat currency in their local currency, but um, they can also have the option of taking the green token as well. And uh, basically, the green token is going to be used as the currency between employers and employees on the ecosystem before it's transferred into fiat and then given to the employee. Number four, it's going to be used to pay the fees. The fees are going to be 0.25% on... Um, all uh, payments to the workers and half of that will go to grain and half of, half of that will go to the partner as well. There will be a minimum 1% extra paid in grain tokens by the company to the employee for direct compensation for workers and I mentioned before that will vary depending on the requirements um, and what the uh, company wants to pay out. 
And number six, the green token can be traded on external exchanges after the ICO. When this gets listed, you'll be able to uh, um, change it or buy even more of it. So I'm happy to report that don't seem to be any scam warnings or red flags about this project whatsoever. The team all checks out. It looks like it's a legitimate project. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty promising in that regard. So if you um, have found anything out about Grain and you've got any concerns, we're a community here. So please post in the comments below. Um, or indeed, if you found anything about any projects that I've reviewed or uh, we've discussed on the channel, you know, post in the comments below. Um, your comments will be moderated if you have a link in them. Uh, but if you know, if you have raised valid concerns, I will allow them. So don't worry about that. And that that's the reason why your comment might uh, not appear straight away when you post it is because I moderate all linked comments uh, regardless because there's a lot of spam that comes through the channel. <laughs> So the ICO kicks off on Monday, not that long to wait, three days away guys. It starts on Monday, April the 16th, 2018 at 10 a.m. Central European time. Um, they did have a successful pre-sale. Uh, there was uh, bonuses during the pre-sale of 15 and 20%, not that much different from the bonuses being offered at the ICO. And they are 10% for the first 48 hours, and then after that, 5% for the next five days. 4,913 Ether were collected um, or contributed during the pre-sale. So it's quite impressive. They met the soft cap. So all systems go for the main sale on Monday. So the grain token is an Ethereum ERC20 compatible token. Um, it is uh, going to be called grain, G-R-A-I-N, as the ticker. Uh, you need to whitelist if you're going to get involved in the ICO and do KYC checks, etc. If you're a US citizen, you cannot participate, unfortunately. So I'm sorry about that. And I'm sure that will apply to other restricted countries as well. Now, total token supply is 3.6 billion grain tokens. It sounds like a lot, but remember, 25% of them are actually uh, for the uh, liquidity insurance. So they won't be uh, circulating any, anytime soon. And they're required for the ecosystem to function. So they'll probably never be in circulation. The token sale, 30% of the total amount of tokens will be sold during the ICO. It works out at about 1.08 billion. So it's quite a high circulating supply this will have once it reaches the exchanges. So that must be borne in mind if you're going to invest. As I mentioned before, the ICO starts on Monday, April the 16th at 10 a.m. Central European time. Individual minimum investment amount is 0 0.5 Ether. The individual cap is 120 Ether per person. And as I mentioned before, there is a bonus for the first 48 hours, 10% bonus. And for the preceding five days, there's a 5% bonus. And then after that, no bonus until the ICO ends. Now, the ICO has already raised its soft cap. They already raised almost 5,000 Ether. So the soft cap's been met. That's not a concern. Hard cap is 40,000 Ether. Um, so at the moment, that would give it a potential market cap of under $20 million if it hits the exchanges. So tokens will be distributed shortly after the ICO completes. Uh, price of the token, uh, 27,000 grain for one Ether or 0 0.000037 Ether per grain. It works out at about uh, 1.8 cents at current Ethereum prices. So token distribution is as follows. Founding team member will get 5%. Advisors and partnerships get 15%. Public sale, as I mentioned, 30% allocated for the ICO. Bounty program, 1%. Foundation, 24%. And escrow fund, 25% as well. So um, circulatory supply, I think, will be around 1.1 billion when it hits the exchanges, probably given it a market cap, I presume, of around $20 million. So some uh, room for growth there. And of course, there is a uh, vesting period for the team tokens. Uh, the team tokens are going to be subject to a six month vesting period and then released at 10% every month thereafter. Uh, so yeah, the circulatory supply over time will increase. But again, you have to bear in mind that the escrow fund tokens and foundation fund tokens will not be released into the circulatory supply. They're there to ensure stability and, um, you know, uh, address the issues of uh, volatility of the green token. <laughs> So 
So the bounty campaign for grain is um, on bitcointalk.org forum. The link is in the description below as per usual. Now I'm not sure if it's still running, so I would check with the administrator who is Cylon, this guy here, on um, bitcointalk.org forum before attempting to participate. Now it looks like the bounty campaign's been quite successful already. It has uh, uh, drawn a lot of interest into this project and there's um, growing hype behind it. But again, it's been running for quite a while and the ICO does start on Monday. So please double check that you're eligible before participating in the, um, the bounty campaign. Now, as far as tokens are concerned, 0.75% of the total amount of green tokens were allocated to this bounty campaign. Uh, there was seven campaigns. Number one is a signature campaign with 40% of the allocation. Number two, an articles campaign with 35% of the allocation. Uh, number three, Twitter campaign, 6% of the allocation. Four, translations campaign with 11% of allocation. Number five, Telegram campaign, 2% of allocation. Number six, a Reddit campaign with 3% of the allocation. And number seven, a Medium campaign for bloggers with 3% of the allocation. As usual, rules apply. Read them thoroughly if you are going to participate. But as I said, um, because we're so close to the ICO now, it starts on Monday. Please check with the administrator of this campaign before getting involved. So, to the roadmap. 2016 was when it all started with the founding of Flex Central. They got a million euros total capital. The founders put in quite a healthy chunk of that as well. Moving on to 2017, the first beta customers committed to Flex Central. They released the first public version of the white paper for Grain. Grain Foundation was established and um, friends and family in a pre-ICO round uh, they, they raised a whopping 500,000 euros. So Grain Foundation was established in Zug in Switzerland. I have to mention that because that's quite an important place for cryptocurrency, as you're probably aware. 2018 quarter one, the token sale was meant to start, but they had regulatory issues with Swiss FINMA, um, and they decided to postpone until they could comply with all regulatory problems, and that's very sensible. So the ICO is going to kick off on Monday, on April the 16th, and that takes us into quarter two, 2018. The first public beta of Grain API is set to be launched as well. The private beta, you can also watch it on YouTube. I put the link up there uh, before. They're going to get their listing on the first exchanges in um, quarter two, 2018 as well, once the ICO is successfully completed. Now, looking forward, the um, Grain API version 1.0 will be released in quarter three of 2018, and the first strategic development partner sign up will happen then also. Uh, 2018 quarter four, they will have the first beta test developer solution with Grain, and then milestone number 10, active Grain transaction partner. So uh, they hope to have 10 people using the uh, platform by the end of the year. Then 2019, they hope to have the first revenue reporting quarter and the announcement of a financial plan as well. So that's the roadmap. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the team now. Ono Hector, he's the CEO and president of the board. He used to work for Microsoft in a very senior role, senior director, and he's introduced several products to the EMEA market during uh, 18 pioneering years. Windows, Microsoft Office has been involved in, and he's managed a lot of introductions of US startups to the EMEA market, and we'll look at his profile LinkedIn in a second. Um, Andre <clears throat> Bonvenie, I think it is, is a serial entrepreneur and investor. Um, he's responsible for several US startup successes in the EMEA market as well. Eric Koster, um, he is an experienced blockchain consultant and CEO of Global Screen. He is the blockchain strategist and board member. Um, R. Joe, or Arho is it, Van Ramhorst, sorry for the mispronunciation names guys, uh, he's a founding member, he's the CTO at Flex Central, again the main partner behind this project, and he's the design and architecture advisor for the Grain Protocol. Uh, Jeroen, he is a blockchain expert, he's a hacker turned blockchain developer, uh, no LinkedIn though with him there, Artem, again no LinkedIn, he's a smart contract expert, be nice to have being able to view what experience they actually have and where they've worked. Um, let's see, Lucas Huzinga, he's marketing and community. 
uh, responsible for go-to market strategy and community management. Uh, Moritz, he's the uh, founding member, he's a liaison between software developers and Brain, and then Philippe, um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your second name, Philippe, I'm sorry mate, uh, but he's responsible for marketing and PR. Now let's take a little look at the LinkedIn pages of some of the key team members. So we'll take a wee look at a couple of the core team members' uh, LinkedIn pages. Let's start off with Ono, he's the CEO and President. Now um, he's got quite an impressive background. He's uh, formed a few companies in his time and we'll take a look at those in his experience section. He's currently obviously the CEO of Grain, um, co-founder of course at Flex Central, the biggest partner behind this project, the front end partner if you like. Um, and uh, he's founded some other companies as well, Tau Company, Atlantic Crossings, um, and he's worked for Microsoft as well uh, in a senior role. So yeah, he's quite impressive. So Andre Bonveni, he's a serial entrepreneur and investor. He has been with the CEO uh, Ono in many, many different companies and many projects since way back at Microsoft. And there you see he's on the board at Grain, co-founder of Flex Central again, worked at Citrion as did Ono, um, CEO at Tau Company, co-founder Atlantic Crossings again, um, been really with Ono, the CEO, throughout the history since being a sales director at Microsoft. Okay, let's take a look at Eric's LinkedIn page. Now, he's a CEO at Global Screen BV, which means his focus is really gonna be on that company rather than Grain. That's a bit of a concern. When I see LinkedIn profiles that have multiple uh, different um, roles, somebody's undertaking multiple different roles at the same time, that concerns me because it means their focus is not specifically on the uh, project that's at hand. And um, obviously, they are working for Grain at the same time as they're working for Global Screen, but where's their focus going? to be and uh, they're not dedicated to the one project so that's a little bit of a concern for me okay let's look at the advisory board very briefly Hans is the former COO of Randstad they are the world's second largest HR services provider very impressive Hedwig I think you pronounce that is the uh, human resources and organizational development expert um, Rennie, he's an entrepreneur. Bavik, he is a venture capitalist and crypto investor, serial entrepreneur, CFO of private equity company Connor Acquisitions. Interesting. Uh, Roberto De Freitas, um, he is an actuary and risk management professional, works for big insurance companies. Laurent Delaporte, he's probably the standout for these uh, advisors. He's a serial entrepreneur, board member, and also a former Microsoft vice president. Ralph is a lecturer at Nyanrood uh, Business University. He's an expert on how a dynamic workforce connects to strategic and operational excellence. And last but not least, Temi is an assistant professor at University of Groningen. He is implementing IT security and privacy certifications, or at least assisting in that regard. So I have two little concerns about the team. One is, as I pointed out before, uh, some of the team members seem to be focused on other projects. And in my opinion, if you are involved in a blockchain um, startup, you need to be 100% focused on that particular company. Um, you know, you, you can't have three or four different um, uh, things that you're uh, you're focused on, especially if you're you know chief executive officer of another company like Eric is. I think that takes your focus away. So that is a concern for me. The other concern is I can't see much experience um, as far as blockchain development, smart contract development is concerned. Um, I can't view these guys, uh, Jeroen and Artem profiles, so I don't know what they've actually contributed to or what projects they've been part of. So that's unfortunate. Uh, a little bit of concern there as well. And I feel that uh, as far as uh, software development, as far as blockchain development is concerned, this team is a little bit lacking in that regard. Other than that, I think uh, the rest of the team are quite strong. Advisory body is uh, fairly reasonable for a project of this nature. And um, yeah, I, I think they can implement, but again, lingering concerns over um, the development personnel. Flex Central are the main founding partner behind Grain. They are the first front-end solution that will use the Grain infrastructure and um, they are the enterprise workforce management solution that received a million dollars in seed funding capital and it's currently also in closed beta as well. Now they will have transaction partners in the future and transaction partners are the companies that are going to utilize this as their back end for the uh, labor contracts. 
So important to note that KPMG are the legal advisory body for this project. Now, if you don't know who they are, they're a multinational company that provides auditing, tax, and legal advisory services as well. So these are very important uh, to have behind you, especially when you're launching an ICO and all the legal implications and ramifications that can uh, occur from that. And uh, important as well to note that they've read through the white paper and they've given it their seal of approval as well. So quite a few of you asked me to review this project, so I hope you enjoy this. Um, as for community support, it is pretty good with this project. Um, it has got some hype behind it. And like I say, um, there are a few people on my channel wanting this review. So they are active on Telegram, Medium, especially Medium. The blog's quite good, it's quite informative as well. Uh, they're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, BitcoinTalk.org and uh, Slack as well. Now, if we just quickly look at their Telegram, they have 8,229 members on the Telegram, which is fairly impressive. Um, Twitter is no less impressive, 5,256 followers there. And I did a quick audit of their Twitter and they don't have many fake followers at all. So they've not bought any followers. Um, it looks like there is quite good support for this uh, project going forward and that's good. <laughs> Okay, it's that time you've been waiting for, verdict time. So let's take a look at the positives in this ICO. Now, number one is they do have a working beta version again. Click on the information icon at the top right hand of the video and it will take you to a link to the um, beta version demonstration on their YouTube channel. Number two, this has got a low token price and uh, tokens are about 1.8 cents. So that's gonna you know, give some room for growth, give some uh, potential to add value to the token, which I'm sure it will over time. Number three, this is an innovative and a good idea as well. Uh, nobody else has thought of it. And that leads to a lack of competition, which means really at the moment, this is the only back-end infrastructure for this type of um, labor contract and payment service. And as a result, number five, this is likely to be picked up and used by indirect competitors. Uh, I mentioned a couple of them in the uh, competition section. And, uh, you know, they're the ideal partners that are going to be um, looking to utilize this, uh, this infrastructure. Number six, this solves real pain points for small and medium enterprises. You know, the, the pain points about getting paid, um, about... Uh, you know, getting rid of the middlemen, saving money by getting rid of your accounting department even, um, you know, your um, um, payroll department as well can go. So this really does disrupt and solve real pain points for small and medium enterprises. And I think as well, I mentioned it in the blockchain section, I think this is an adequate, even a good use case for blockchain technology. It really showcases what blockchain's all about. And uh, this is an ideal application for it. Number eight, this is a truly disruptive ICO. If this gets implemented, again, because it solves real pain points, it can really disrupt what is now, you know, traditionally an industry that's, uh, you know, resistant to change, accounting, uh, payroll, human resources. This can be very disruptive. Number nine, the team and advisors understand where their market is. Now, if you look at the advisory body, who they've got on there, you start to sort of connect the dots, um, you know, where they're gonna go with their business model and why these advisors are on board. And uh, you can see that they fundamentally understand where the market for this uh, project is gonna be. Number 10, the material is well presented, it's very polished, the website's lovely, the uh, branding is very good for this project, the white paper's very well written, not overly technical or complicated to put people off. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very well presented. And number 11, it's quite important as well, this will reward and incentivize participants. It basically gives people a reward for using the system, whether you're an employer or an employee, if you use this ecosystem, then you're gonna get rewarded and you're gonna get incentivized. And number 12, um, a successful pre-sale and soft cap already met, mean, meaning this project is already green lighted, so there's gonna be no issues going forward. Okay, this project does have negatives, it's no exception. 
And uh, number one on the negative list is some team members appear focused on other projects and that could be to the detriment of this particular project. Number two, there's a lack of verifiable dev team depth and experience. And I also think the development team is too weak. They need more team members focused on building this because it's quite a complex project. Number three, selfish one for me, but this is a high hard cap and it's higher than I would like. The lower the hard cap for a project, the more I like it because I'm an investor and I want to see my uh, investment grow and lower hard caps mean there's more potential for growth. This has a hard cap of around 40,000 Ethereum, which will work out at around $20 million. It's higher than I would like for a project of this nature. Number four, the total uncirculating supply is high and it may discourage some from getting invested. A lot of people will look at this and go, oh, hang on, oh, this has got a 3.6 billion total supply. That's too high for me. You know, without actually going through the material and um, finding out that 50% of those total tokens probably will never be in circulation. And number five, larger companies may tend to develop, may prefer to develop similar solutions themselves rather than using a third party system like Green. So number six, there's no GitHub code available. They've been a bit stingy with releasing the code, keeping it under wraps and keeping it private. Um, again, having, a Git, uh, having GitHub and having some code on there that people can actually go through reassures investors and uh, that should have been done here, I feel. Number seven, uh, the roadmap could be more detailed for my liking. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it's as detailed. I don't think there's enough thought gone into the roadmap. Number eight, probably my biggest negative for this project is partnerships with exchanges for the employee fiat currency payouts are not confirmed yet. So there's no, you know, and they're gonna be key to this project succeeding. So that's gonna be the, the biggest negative for me. This project needs to give fiat payouts to its employees and there's no way of doing that at the moment. They don't have any partnerships with any exchanges to facilitate this. And that's for me, the biggest risk that this project poses. So moving on to potential gains. Well, I see this as quite a good uh, investment as far as potential gains are concerned. Now in an ultra bearish market, I think this is just gonna stay put. I don't think it's gonna go down very much. Um, but again, you know, as we've seen in the last few months, um, ultra bearish markets are to the detriment of altcoins. Really, they really are in particular. And um, a lot of coins have lost a lot of value. We're starting to see a recovery now, and that's good. Uh, but if it launches in an ultra bearish market, then I can see this just staying where it is, to be honest. Uh, and again, in a bearish market, I, um, I maintain that sentiment. It's not really gonna do anything in a bearish market. However, again, bullish markets are always favorable for reasonably uh, position projects and this one is no exception this one i think can do a 5x uh, straight away in a bullish market because it simply it's branded well it's got a good support behind it and it's got an innovative product as well and i say that in a perma bull market i can see this one doing a 20x from its starting point so for flipping i think you, there's a good case to be argued for flipping especially in a bullish environment and for hodling, I think you're going to yield the best returns if you hodl onto this and it, it starts to get picked up and used by uh, different companies. So long term, I think this one's going to be very favorable. So final verdict time. Uh, what do I think about this project? Well, I think it's a solid project with a few flaws that can be overlooked due to the potential of this project and the potential the market is large for this project it you know it could uh, be a roaring success if it's adopted by a lot of small and medium businesses and that's where it's going to be key because it's already got a, a system that a lot of these small businesses will want to implement and as a result I'm bullish on this project mm. yep I'm giving it four out of five stars and um, you know I was reluctant to give it uh, less than this because I think the potential of this project is very high indeed. I think this has got um, a lot of potential to be picked up by um, you know these small and medium enterprises despite its few flaws that I've highlighted in the negative section. So that is the review for Grain. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it please like and please subscribe to the channel. Every subscriber helps. We uh, you know we support you all 
we uh, love you all. We listen to you all here on the Cryptonimatron channel. So uh, being part of the community is very important for us. And as usual, I've just got to wind up by uh, repeating the old disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor. These videos are not financial advice, especially not any of these ICO reviews, guys. Please, if you're going to invest in ICOs, bear in mind they pose inherent risk and uh, any cryptocurrency investment is risky. Um, it's a volatile environment. You've got to bear that in mind. And if you're going to invest in anything, guys, please do your own due diligence, do your own research, and never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always invest with caution and always invest wisely. Use your brain. Don't listen to YouTubers, guys. You know, we're not experts, we're not gurus. Most of us have been in the space for a limited amount of time, you know, before before that we were working at McDonald's or, you know, we were um, fixing your roof on your house or whatever we were doing, you know, we're all in the same boat here, we're all, it's a brand new technology, it's a new community, so, you know, think about it guys, eh? don't put your trust in people that do reviews on YouTube, but if I've helped you a little bit, great, I hope I, I, hope I did help you a little bit, anyway, I'm off to the pub, so thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate every view, every like, and every subscriber.